words. Thank you, Brother Eddie. That was a beautiful song and done very, very well. I, uh, I have a, a little confession to make before I start this morning. I'm a little jealous because Eddie can play and he's got a great voice and he's young and he's handsome and I don't have the voice and I can't play and we won't go any further. But uh, we're glad you're here this morning. Please take your Bibles and go to the book of the Psalms, Psalm 113, Psalm 113 this morning. I, uh, I praise the Lord for the opportunity to preach his word, Amen. but it's just like I was telling my wife this morning, it's also a scary thing. This is God's holy word, Amen. and I am just a human sinful man. And believe me, I've been praying really hard and asking the Lord to take, make sure that I was sin-free today because God needs to be able to speak through me. Um, I, I don't know how many of your hunters or, or, you know, or go out and, and try to call animals, but I'll tell you what, there's a, there's a trick to it. And if you don't figure out that little trick, all you're doing is letting them know where you're at. And then you don't see them. And, uh, you know, I hope today that you'll see God and not Pastor Steve. Now, I'm not saying I'm going to become God up here, so don't take that wrong, <laughs> because that's not going to happen. But you know what? I hope you'll see God through his word today. Because if you see God through his word today, he's going to speak to your heart. And then I pray that as he speaks to your heart, you'll do something about it. Amen. It is really easy to sit in a nice, comfortable seat and say, boy, I'm glad so-and-so was here to hear that today. But you know what? Let me tell you, if that's the thought that's going through your mind, it might just be that God's trying to get your attention. Um... Just really want to focus on the Lord this morning. Psalm 113, Psalm 113, verse number 1. The Bible says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Do you think God's maybe trying to get our attention about something here? That word praise is just a little bit prominent here. Let's go on. It says, blessed be the name of the Lord from this time forth and forever, forevermore. From the rising out of the sun unto the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. The Lord is high above all nations and his glory above the heavens. Who is like unto the Lord our God, who dwelleth on high? who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust and lifteth the needy up out of the dunghill, that he may set him with princes, even with the princes of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. As we look at this passage this morning, I hope that we will truly praise the Lord because he is worthy of praise. Amen. He is worthy of honor. He's worthy of glory. You and I are not. And we will look at that a little bit today as well. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we ask this morning that you'd meet here with us. Lord, we need your help. We need you to speak to our hearts. Lord, as we study your word this morning and we dig into this passage and see what you're trying to show us today, Lord, that we'd have ears to hear. And Lord, that we would have hearts that are ready to be molded and shaped by you. Lord, I ask that you'd help us to set ourselves, our pridefulness, our arrogance, Lord, our humanity aside. 
and just focus on only you this morning. We thank you for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, if you take notes, and I believe it's a good thing, um, how many of you have ever thought, man, that is so good. I got to remember that. And then the next day you were sitting there going, you know, there was something that God really spoke to my heart about, and I just can't remember what it was. You know what? Sometimes if we jot a little note down, we can go back to that, and we go, that's what it is right there. I want to take care of that right now. You know what? I encourage you to take notes. If you do, I want to give you an outline right now. Point number one, God's name is the greatest. Point number one, number two, God's throne is the highest. Point number three, God's love is the kindest. And that's what we're going to cover out of this passage today. And uh, let's just see what God has for us. Here it, it's four times in verses one and three between those two verses. Praise or praised is used. I believe God's trying to get our attention here. There is something we need to catch out of these verses. But it says, servants praise him. So the question starts out is, who's the servants that he's talking about? Well... I suppose this could be specifically talking to the Jews because I believe that, you know, this psalm was in the time frame when it was talking to the Jews. But can I tell you, it also pertains to you and I today. God is worthy to be praised. He is worthy of his servants to praise him. You know, so many times we think, you know, boy, I sure wish so-and-so would just get their heart right. Wow. When was the last time you shared a passage of Scripture in love with so-and-so? Just a thought. Because you know what? When we sit back and we think, you know, I wish so-and-so would get this right in their life. Really? What are we doing? We are putting our place in the place of our judge. Not where we ought to be. When we see that need, what should it be? It should be a prod to us to lovingly help them. Because you know what? I'm sure glad that I don't have people standing over me going, Steve, what about this? Oh, Steve, what about this? By the way, Steve, because you know what? I'm no different than they are. God created us all the same. And you know what? I appreciate, I I was listening to a little bit of Brother Winkle's class this morning. I was doing a little bit of final preparation for today, and I just happened to be in a situation where I could hear him. And and one of the things that that he was saying is, you know, I forgot the thought I was going to (laughs) say. It has nothing to do with age. I've been this way my whole life. I guess it wasn't that important. Um, you know, the, what is important is we need to praise the Lord. Yes. We need to quit putting ourselves on a judgment seat above others and just praise the Lord. Do you realize as, as soon as we start lifting ourselves up, that's called pride. And do you realize God talks a lot about pride in the Bible? And it's not good. It's not good. God wants us to praise his name. You know, we need to praise God's name. I want you to realize, though, that the Jewish people here, they did. They had a responsibility. 
And their responsibility was to share the true and living God with their Gentile neighbors. That was their job. Now, I want to I wanna look at just a couple of verses here, and we're going to move on. Um, I, I need to get through the first part because the last part's the most important. Um, back in the book of Isaiah, back in the book of Isaiah and chapter number 42, Isaiah and chapter number 42, and verse number 6, this is what the Bible says. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness and will hold thine hand and will keep thee and give thee a covenant of the people for the light of the Gentiles. So what was God wanting these people to do? To share him with the Gentiles. Amen. Now, if you are not a Jew, you are a Gentile. That's just kind of an easy distinction there. I used to say, well, we're all Gentiles, but I got corrected one day when I had a young gentleman that was of Jewish descent that walked up to me afterwards and he goes, really, I'm a Jew. And so I say now the majority of us here are Gentiles, but you know what? We are called to praise the Lord. Why? Because the Jews here were sent to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, I mean uh, the gospel of the living God with us so that we could know him. And you know what? As God sent the Jews to their neighbors, neighbors the Gentiles, do you realize we're supposed to go to our neighbors Amen. and share the gospel of Jesus Christ? Now, I want to, this is what I really want to catch this morning. The Apostle Paul applied this verse in his ministry. Um, take your Bibles, go back to the book of Acts. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts. The gospel, I mean the, the book of Acts, chapter number 13. Acts chapter number 13 and verse number 47. Acts chapter number 13, verse number 47. For so hath the Lord commanded us, saying, I have set thee to be a light of the Gentiles, that thou shouldest be for salvation unto the ends of the earth. Do you see the, the, the comparison in the two verses? Back here in this Old Testament passage of the Psalms, he's saying that there to be a light for God. And what did the Apostle Paul say here? It's to be a light, to shine for God. And then back in uh, the Gospel of Luke, Luke in chapter number 2, Luke chapter number 2 and verse number 32. Same kind of thing that we're looking at here. It says, a light to be lightened, the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. God has, sent, has left us here to do a job. And the job is to proclaim his honor and glory, to give him praise. God has a good name. God has a great name. I'll tell you what, growing up, I used to hear this all the time. And you could ask my mom. Um, I'm sure that she would verify this. I get ready to go somewhere, and my dad, this was my, the last words I heard every time before I left the house. Steve, remember your name. Steve, remember your name. Amen. Now, you know what? When I was little, that didn't mean a whole lot. Is like, oh, okay, <laughs> my name's Steve Flippo. <laughs> That's not hard. <laughs> I've known that for a long time. I'm going to get an A on this test. But you know what? As I got older, I realized that's not at all what my dad was trying to tell me. My dad was trying to tell me that the Flippo name has been made a good name. And he wanted me to keep it that way. And you know what? I, I pray every day that the Lord will help me keep the Flippo name a good name. Because the Flippo name is nothing compared to the other name I represent. And that's the name of God. Because God has a great name. And he's worthy of praise. You know, 
God looks to those that ignore him. God looks to those that defy him. God looks to those that reject him. And he loves them. And he loves them. When was the last time that somebody said something bad to you and you looked at them with a, a pure heart, a smile on your face and said, thank you? You know what? It's easy to get bitter. It's easy to get angry. It's easy to go, who are you to say that about me? Whoa, hold on. Who are you? Who are you? Who am I? You know what? We're just wicked sinners. That's all we are. And we were all created the same. I, my, my youth director, when I was in the youth group, he used to say this all the time. The ground is level at the cross. You know what? Every one of us are on the same level. We all have the same end. And that end is kneeling before Almighty God as our judge. And you know what? If you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's going to be a glorious day. Especially if you're spending your life serving him since you got saved. Two different judgments there. I realize that. I'm not trying to tie them all together. But you know what? There's a lot of people who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And when they kneel before Almighty God as their judge... The Bible says they will be cast into the lake of fire for eternity. You know, I hope that there is no one in here today that would say, eh, they made that choice. It's, that's their problem, not mine. Wow. You know what? I hope that if somebody was hurting, you would do everything within your power to rush to their assistance and to help them. I remember one evening I left the church and I headed down Somerville Road heading toward Imler. And I had my family in the car. Stephen and Daniel were just little. And there was a car on its top in the ditch down here. And the front tire was spinning. I thought, oh, no. So I pulled off the road as far as I could safely back behind that car a ways. And I turned to my wife and my children and I said, stay in the car. Number one, I didn't know what I was going to see. And number two, there's a safety factor. If this silly thing does decide to explode, at least my family's safe in the car or safer. And I walked up to that car, and I bent down, and I looked into the, the driver's side window. And all I could see, pinned between the headrest and the top of the car, was feet on the driver's side, and about here up behind. And I, <gasps> and I realized it was a dolly. A little girl's doll. But I'll tell you what, it about made me sick. You know, I praise the Lord, there was nobody in the car that day. And I learned a very valuable lesson that day. You know what? We never know what might happen. I'm pretty sure when those folks left home, they didn't plan on getting in an accident. I don't know where they were. I looked all around, there was nobody around. I reached up and I stopped that tire from spinning. I didn't want anybody else to think the same thing I did, that this had just happened. You know what? We never know when our end's coming. Right. But you know what we can know? That there is a loving God that's worthy of praise. Yeah. You know, we, uh, we look at this, we see the... I, I want you to take your Bible and go back to the book of Malachi. 
the last book of the Old Testament. Malachi, one of the minor prophets there. Book of Malachi. And uh, Malachi chapter number 1 and verse number 11. The Bible says, From the rising of the sun, even to the going down of the same, my name shall be great among the Gentiles. And in every place incense shall be offered unto my name. And a pure offering, for my name shall be great among the heathen, saith the Lord of hosts. You know, when the scripture says, says saith the Lord, it means it's going to happen. You know, if I, if I told you, hey, you know what, in five minutes, everybody in here is going to get a million dollars. <laughs> Some of you go, yeah, all right, Pastor Steve. <laughs> You know what, I don't know who you've been talking to, but you better find a little more reliable source. And then we would all be amazed if somebody walked through the door and gave us all a million dollars. But you know what, I wouldn't say that because I don't want to lie to you. But when God says something's going to happen, it happens. Amen. And I'm telling you, this verse here in Malachi says that every Body, everybody is going to give praise to God. The Bible says that every knee shall bow and, e bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Amen. Now here's the question I have for you that goes with that. And this is jumping a little bit ahead in my outline, but it's okay. We're going to cover it in depth here in a little bit. If you don't choose to bow before him and call him your Lord and Savior, you will bow before him Amen. and call him Savior. But at that point, it will be too late. Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary so that you and I could be bought back. We're under the authority of the devil. But Jesus Christ gave his life to buy us back. We need to receive that gift. Amen. You can't work for it. You can't earn it. You can't buy it. Just receive it. Let's move on here. I want you to understand that when God says something, it's true. Because God's name is the greatest. Amen. And you know what? God's throne is the highest. I want you to listen to these verses here in Psalm 113. It says, Praise ye the Lord. Praise, O ye servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord for this time forth and forevermore. From the rising of the sun and the going down of the same, the Lord's name is to be praised. Now these next few verses are what we're going to look at here. It says, The Lord is high above all nations, and his glory above the heavens. Who is like unto the Lord our God, who dwelleth on high, who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in the earth? As we look at this, I want you to think. We are not under a monarchy here in the United States of America. And I don't know where your thought goes with this, but I'm telling you, the President of the United States is not our king. He's not. He is an elected official, and Lord willing, he got elected because he represents the majority of the people. Now, I, honest, I, I don't believe everything that President Trump does. I mean, I, I don't agree with it. I don't, not everything. But I pray for him every day. And you know what? I hope you do too. Because God, God's word tells us to. But you know what? I believe that God has given the United States a reprieve through President Trump. I really do. 
But one of these days, there will be no more reprieves. There won't be. You know what? You think about your history classes when you were in school. When you studied about monarchies, kings, rulers. How many kings usually dwelt down among the people? Not very many. Matter of fact, you'd probably be scratching really hard to even find one. And you know why? Because sometimes they made decisions that the people didn't like. And if they were down among the people, they may not like what happened to them. It's a reality. You know what? They kept themselves separated from the people they reigned because in all reality, there was a little bit of fear but also so that they could reign without bias. You know what? There is just about nothing more heart-wrenching than a little girl walking up and grabbing your pant leg, looking up and going, Hi. Oh! <laughs> you know what? I love children. I love them. And when that little child walks up and they wrap their arms around you and they look up at you and they go, I love you. It kind of melts your heart. If it doesn't, come talk to me. I'll try to help you. <laughs> I will take the scripture and try to help you. Because you know what? That does something to you. Or it should. I remember walking into El Donato Parts one day. Timothy, my youngest son, was just little. I'm guessing he was probably three. And I walk into the auto parts, and he's right behind me. And I turn around in time to see him walk over to a man, grab him by the leg, look up, and he goes, I love you! And the guy walked over to me, and he goes, he doesn't even know me. And he looked at my son and he goes, you don't even know me. And he goes, everybody needs to be loved. <laughs> That's my boy. No, you know what? And that man looked at me and he goes, he doesn't even know me. And I said, he's right. Everybody needs love. How do you argue with that? Hey, you know what? Think about this king ruling, trying to make wise decisions, and this little kid walking up and wrapping their arms around the leg and going, I love you. You think there might be a little biased decision after that? I, I'd be tempted to be a little biased. But you know what? They kept themselves separated. But I want you to understand something here. <laughs> our God, our King of Kings, is not like that. He is not like that. God gave us His Word. Everything that we need to survive. I like the ac acrostic that goes with Bible. Maybe I'll share that with you as we get a little further into this. Um, i got to think about it. I don't know if I want to put that in here or not. Here, here's what we need to see. We need to see that a king's throne was exalted. People looked up to them. People respected them. People honored them. What happened if a person did, person did not honor a king? What happened if a person disrespected a king? What if a person spoke up against the king? You know what? That person was no more. Went and picked up Jonathan from the airport last night, came back, brought him, brought him back home. He's been on a mission trip in El Salvador. And he was explaining on the way home, he says, their new president, their, well, I don't know what you'd call him, their new leader, um, anyhow, he set up a proclamation. 
He has put an extensive police force into place down there. There is an armed police officer about every hundred yards, everywhere you look. But this is what he put into place. If you in any way injure a police officer, it's life in prison. Now, you know what? You and I might go, so? Their prisons are going to fill up and then they're going to have a problem. You got to understand their law about the prisons there. <laughs> if you are put in prison, you know how you get fed? By visitors. If people don't bring you food, you don't eat. That's the way they work it. The government doesn't pay for their food. People bring them food. Here's the last half of that decree. In prison, for life, no visitors. <laughs> it sounded kind of cut and dry to me. <laughs> hey, you know what? Is that really any different than what we're looking at here when we look at monarchies? Not really. Why are those officers set in the position they are? Authority. Do you realize the gang problems that they used to have over there are gone? Or virtually gone? Hey, you know what? I'm not saying we ought to go to that. I don't want to see that happen. <laughs> Man, I, I, I don't want to see that happen. We have freedoms, and I like our freedoms. We have the freedom to worship. I like that freedom. You know what? Let's, let's jump into this. We need to see some scripture here. Um, take your Bibles. I am really running out of time. Um, go, go in your Bible to the last book of the Bible, the book of the Revelation, chapter number 19. Revelation 19. And we are going to whip through some of this real quickly. Revelation 19, verse number 16. This is what the Bible says. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh the name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. That is Jesus Christ. Amen. He is coming back and he is King of kings. And he is to be exalted far above any other king. Um, book of uh, Philippians, the book of Philippians, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, and chapter number 2, verse number 9, Philippians chapter number 2, verses 9 through 11, this is what the Bible says, wherefore God hath highly exalted him, and given him a name which is above every name, that the name of Jesus every knee should bow of things in heaven and of things in earth, and things under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Why? To the glory of God. Because God is worthy of praise, and God's throne is highest. Yes. You know what? That in itself ought to move us to serve him. That ought to move us to praise him. That ought to move us to speak up when people are saying stuff that's not right. But you know what? It's easy to sit back and say, it'll all work out. You know what? I'm glad that my parents and two little old ladies that ran a good news club at the Elgin School after school every, every year did not just say, ah, it'll all work out. Because my parents spent my whole life sharing the gospel with me. Amen. And at nine years old, I went to Good News Club. And these two old ladies, and by the way, I'm not being disrespectful. They were old ladies. They just were taught a Bible lesson. And honestly, the only reason I was there is those ladies could bake cookies. Oh, my word. Those cookies were to die for. 
And that's why I went. But that day, God got a hold of my heart. And he showed me that I was a sinner on my way to hell. And I was scared to death. But you know what? I was no different than a lot of you are today. I was scared to death, but my pride kept me from receiving Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. I got up, I grabbed that cookie, I grabbed that Kool-Aid, I didn't even, I don't even remember enjoying the cookie that day. And I ran home. And back then I could run pretty fast. It didn't take me long to get home. It was about a mile. And I threw my books on the couch. I ran into my room and I dropped down to the foot of my bed. And I called out to Almighty God. And I said, God, I'm a sinner. Please save me. I've never regretted that. And it wasn't long. And my mom came through the door and she said, are you okay? And my dad stepped through the door and he goes, what's wrong? Because normally I come through the door and I say, hey, how are you? By the way, just had a good cookie. <laughs> you know, not that day. I was scared. I knew that if I died, I was going to a crisis eternity in hell. I knew it! And without anybody around, I wanted to get it right with Almighty God. And I confessed my sin before an Almighty God, and I asked Him to be my Lord and Savior. Amen. And I'd like to say, standing before you today, that I've spent every moment since then doing the will of God. But I can't say that. But I am praying that from now on I will. And for a long time I've been striving to do that. You know what? We see this thing of God's name is the greatest, God's throne is the highest. God's love is the kindest. I'll tell you what. I can think of so many people that start, their, their faces and names start flashing in my mind. Of people that have wronged me in my life. And you know what those memories do for me? They make me miserable. That's all they do. Because can I do anything about the past? Only this. Don't repeat it. Right? Why do we study history? So as not to repeat it. You know what? I hate it when people come up to me and said, remember when you did this to me? So why should I do that to somebody else? I don't like it. What makes me think that they'll like it? You know what? God's love is the kindest. Because even though we in our wickedness have condemned, condemned him to the point that God gave his only begotten son to die on the cross for us, he still did it anyway. He didn't say, remember when? <laughs> Some people may call me a bully, and I don't try to be, but... I, I guess it's just the way I grew up and just the way I am. I'm Steve Flippo. I see a bug, I go, you're right, that bug didn't do anything to me, but it's a bug. Okay? So I flick it, or I step on it. You know, I don't look at myself as a mean person, but that's what I do. You know what? I'm glad God doesn't go to you and I. Is he capable of it? He's king of kings, lord of lords. You bet he could. He spoke us into existence. <laughs> that was a good one. <laughs> He's gone. <laughs> I'm glad he doesn't do that. It's because he's the kindest. 
You know what? He overlooks our wickedness because he loves us. No, <laughs> he doesn't overlook it. He gave his life for it. Amen. You know what? It's not about overlooking. It's about calling upon us to repent and ask for forgiveness. And to ask him to be our Lord and Savior. You know, we see these, the picture in these verses. Psalm 113. I need to get back there. I want you to see this. Verse number 7. He raiseth up the poor out of the dust. He lifteth the needy out of the dunghill. That's manure. That he may set him with princes, even the princes of his people. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. We don't have a lot of time. I have a lot of passages here that talk about women in the Bible that were barren and God gave them children. The Old Testament's just full of them. Why? Because God loved them. And he saw fit to give them children. I want to give you just a few. Um, you can find these a lot of these in, in the book of Genesis. Um, 1 Samuel talks about some of them. I, I, just, I just want to go through these. Um, Isaac's wife, Rebekah, became the mother of Jacob, who fathered the 12 tribes of Israel. Um, Jacob's favorite wife, Rachel, she had Joseph. By the way, if you look at these, these women weren't able to have children, and then God allowed them to have children. Um, Hannah gave birth to Samuel. Elizabeth gave birth to John the Baptist. And who was John the Baptist? He was the forerunner of Jesus Christ. Let me ask you a question. Who compares today in our day and age with John the Baptist? How about you and I? Are we forerunners? Proclaiming Christ before he returns? John the Baptist was proclaiming Christ before he was born. What is our job as saved people? To proclaim Christ to a lost and dying world before he returns. You know what? I re Lord really hit me with this while I was studying for this message. How many of you would say that John the Baptist was a pretty great man? I think he was. He did great things. He spread the gospel. <laughs> Wouldn't it be great to stand before God and hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant? How about you and I? Are we forerunners? If you know Jesus Christ is your Lord and Savior this morning, do you realize God has left you here to tell other people about him? If that wasn't the case, why didn't he just say, okay, you're saved, come home. You're saved, come home. Just a thought. Just a thought. But in his kindness, he says, go and tell all people about me. Go into the highways and hedges and compel them to come. That my house may be full. Do you realize there's empty seats here today? You know what that means? There's space for more people next week. And I'm not one of these pessimists, but I'm assuming that there'll be some empty seats next week. And you know what that means? There's room for more people the following week. Why? So they can hear the gospel. So they can hear about a Savior that is so kind 
so loving, so caring. You know, the Bible says in the book of Romans, chapter 3, verse number 10, it says, there is none righteous, no, not one. Romans 3.23 says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, the first half of the verse says, for the wages of sin is death. You know why I work for the company I work for? So that I can pay my bills. I give them work in return for money. And that money pays my bills. Or it's supposed to. Okay. Hey, you know what? God gives us salvation. Why? Because the penalty, the wage of our sin is death. We deserve to spend an eternity in hell. Separated from God forever. Every one of us. But in his love and kindness, he gave his life for you and for me. He paid the wage. He paid the debt. So that you and I don't have to. I'm sure that there is nobody in here that would be upset if you walked into work tomorrow morning and they said, by the way, you don't have to come back, enjoy the rest of your life, we're just going to pay everything for you the rest of your life and you don't have to work anymore. If that happens, let me know because I want to come to work where you're working. <laughs> I do. Because you know what? If they were paying everything for me, that means I don't have to go in there and work. And if I don't have to go in there and work, you know what that does? That frees up at least eight hours a day. And you know what I could do with that eight hours? I could go fishing. I could go hunting. I could do that. But you know what? I could also proclaim the name of the Christ a whole lot more. But you know what? I believe this is why God doesn't allow that to happen. How much time do we spend that we have now doing that? You know what? You know why God doesn't give us millions of dollars? Because we have a hard time handling the amount that he gives us now. Uh, it's just a biblical principle. Some people do better than others. But you know what, folks? I want you to understand here that God's name is the greatest. God's throne is the highest. And God's love is the kindest. Why? Because of the last part of that, Romans 6, 23. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. You know what? There is no other salvation other than Jesus Christ. That's what the Bible says. His name is above all names. He's the King of kings. He's the Lord of lords. The Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. When God says it, it will happen. But God invites you today to come before him and bow yourself before him on your own accord and ask him to be your Lord and Savior. Amen. So that on that judgment day, you are not forced to kneel before him and call him God. He's the greatest. His throne is the highest. And his love is the kindest. Let's.